How's it going, everybody? My name is Magneti, and I welcome you to The Mothership. And today, we're going to be talking about the top games you never expected to reach your 2023 must playlist. Let's get started. All right, so first up, we're going to be starting off with Fallout 76. This launched in 2018, and it was pretty much garbage. You know, like it was unplayable at launch, lots of random and some even game breaking bugs. And a lot of the larger first initial updates were literally just bug fixes. And even some of the larger updates as of recently were just bug fixes. According to Phantom Wiki, 76 has had 15 major updates since launch with no signs of slowing down. That's pretty incredible. Bethesda's taking care of their kid. Now, something crazy in my opinion is that it took Bethesda two years to add NPCs with the Wastelanders update because Pete Hines expected a lot more PvP between players rather than what fans actually preferred, which was group or team PvE. So again, it took them two years to add NPCs to Fallout 76, which is pretty incredible. There really wasn't much in-game content until Nuclear Winter and Daily Ops were added. Nuclear Winter added a Battle Royale style mode and Daily Ops added Daily Missions, which gave much more sustenance for fans to enjoy. Lots of people enjoy the Nuclear Winter Battle Royale style mode and the infinite missions in the Daily Ops is something that's pretty nice to have that you can come back to every day and it'll be different. Honestly, you should definitely check out Fallout 76. It has certainly grown a lot since launch and definitely belongs on your 2023 must play list. Up next is gonna be Cyberpunk 2077. I know, okay, now hold on. This game was released in 2020, so it's only about two and a half years old. But look, I know, I was also really disappointed by this release and it's not what it was supposed to be and it probably never will be to be completely honest, but, but it has gotten way better after all the fabled game breaking bugs got fixed at least. So again, keeping in mind that it's only two and a half years old, there's been about eight major updates since release in 2020. The first two patches were all bug fixes. The first one being an, oh shit, fuck, we gotta fix this. This is garbage, broken, unplayable shit game. And then the second one was 99% quality of life and essential fixes. The third patch finally added some, some, some fan requests, not a ton, but some. The majority of the updates just made the game more whole and playable, what it was expected to be really when it launched. Unlike Fallout 76, CD Projekt Red didn't really add any big content, rather they just made the game smoother and more normal, more operable and wholesome. With just adding a few bits and bobs here and there, they really accomplished that really well. Uh, small weapons, cars, or apparel were added. Things like driving, AI, crowd FX, difficulty, the economy, appearance changeability, wardrobe saving, edge runners implementations, more weapons, better love interest wholeness, overall combat and combat AI, perk tree reworks. Those were just some of the fixes that uh, CD Projekt Red has bought to Cyberpunk. If you do come back to Cyberpunk and still feel it's a little light, uh, honestly, you should check out this video right here in the corner. It's, uh, it's by Synth, and it's a video about how he added, well, not how he added, but more so what Cyberpunk looks like after he added 300 mods. It was actually a really interesting video. It's not too, too long, and it really changes the game a lot. Honestly, making this video really made me realize that I need to do yet another run in Cyberpunk 2077 to see all the features I still haven't seen yet. So that's really awesome to see. Hey, if you found this video helpful so far, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to drop a sub down below. That way I know I'm doing something right here and keep doing the right things. Moving on to the last, but absolutely the opposite of the least. You're probably gonna hate me, but it is the fabled No Man's Sky. <laughs> this was released in 2016. You've probably heard of this game before and it's probably been a while since you either played it or heard its name. No Man's Sky had an absolute horrendous launch. Okay, I'm talking like top tier, cherry on top, horse shit, okay? Sean Murray, the CEO of Hello Games, stormed the gates with all these promised features, multiplayer, billions of worlds, lots of exploring, spaceships, engineering, survival, woo, etc. Yet at launch, everyone was disappointed, including myself. Unlike the past two games we've talked about, No Man's Sky worked. It fucking worked. Okay, that was, woohoo, that was great. But none of the features that Sean Murray brought up in the pre-release interviews 
were in the game. It was a bare bones game, but hey, it, it worked, okay? And honestly, the reason that it had such a bad launch is mostly due to Sean Murray, or the CEO of Hello Games, not really knowing how to brief the press and not understanding the timelines of game producing. But we're not here for that, so anyway, if you made it this far, go ahead and leave a comment down below of a game that you haven't come back to since its launch for me. I want to know. All right, there's been 25 major updates since 2016. 25 major updates since 2016. That's literally, that is so many. Eight years almost, closer to seven years, but 25 major updates in seven years. And they're still not done. Like, what? what? Okay, let's quickly list these 25 updates. You can go ahead and just skip 20 to 30 seconds ahead if you don't want to hear them all, but I'm going to try and read them quick. All right. Whew. Foundation, Pathfinder, Atlas Rises, Next, The Abyss, Visions, Beyond, Synthesis, Living Ship, Exomech, Crossplay, Desolation, Origins, Halloween 2020, Next Generation, Companions, Expeditions, Prisms, Frontiers, Sentinel, Outlaws, Endurance, Waypoint, Fractal, Interceptor. Whew. That was all of them. That was all 25. And at the time of writing my script for this video, the last update I had played was Frontiers or Sentinel, which was numbers 19 or 20. So I'm not even up to date on all of the updates that Hello Games has put into this game. So as you can see, 25 major updates, that is a lot of updates. So let's just go over the really big stuff that's changed because 25 updates is a lot to go over. And I, you know, I've only got so much time to hold your attention. So. We're gonna try and quickly <laughs> uh, mention the massive changes brought to No Man's Sky. All right, here we go. Base building, vehicles and exocraft, better story and missions, portals, multiplayer, of course, third person view, character creation, ocean overhaul, underwater bases, submarines, better planet variation, shared community mission progress, which is huge, building mechanic got overhauled after it was released, even more and better quest lines, new mechs, crossplay and friends system, freighter DLC, which is like giant fucking spaceships, taming and breeding, and literally just an absolute fuckload of overhauls on pretty much everything that they ever released that they hadn't overhauled yet. So it's insane. Let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, No Man's Sky is a game for the books. If Hello Games' dedication, absolute relentless desire to fix their piece of shit is not enough of a motivator for you to at least check out some like YouTube gameplays of it, like recent ones or something, then there's literally just absolutely no convincing you and you might as well just completely forget I ever even existed. But No Man's Sky is another game I absolutely need to come back to more in 2023 and beyond because clearly they're not done. So like I need to play the shit out of this game. There's been so many changes. It isn't even the same game anymore, like literally. It's not even a completely different game. All right, so we talked about Fallout 76 lightly, Cyberpunk 2077 a little bit more intensely, and then of course the Fable No Man's Sky slightly more intensely. This video was intentionally made to just kind of skim over the majority of these three games and more so just bring attention back to them because they are much better than when they were released. So which of these will you come back to in 2023? If you like the video, go ahead, drop a like or subscribe so I know to keep making content like this. Otherwise, we'll talk again real soon. Peace.